Okay, I've got back from the uh, rain shoot this morning with the Apsin Gladius. Uh, I've took the, the actual air cylinder off and now I'm going to uh, put a washer uh, between the spring and the uh, exhaust valve uh, to increase the pressure of the uh, spring. Uh, this needs to be done because uh, I'd opened up the transfer port to two millimeters, and based on that, I had to wind my uh, uh, hammer spring right down. Uh, but it's not giving very good consistency. So what I've got to do now is increase the pressure on the uh, the actual valve uh, spring, and that will allow me to uh, increase the tension on the hammer spring, and hopefully I'll get a better consistency in shot to shot uh, and this will be a stop gap between uh, shooting now and uh, getting a, a spare regulator uh, a spare air cylinder and when I get the spare air cylinder I'll actually put uh, the uh, Robert Lane regulator in that you see I've had problems with air leaks in this so I've had to put my o-ring back on uh, and in which case it's not allowing it to breathe now so uh, really the regulator is pointless so uh, I'm going back to standard but I'm upgrading it uh, so there we go so the first thing will be to take off the uh, actual valve at the top of the cylinder which is just there and we'll take it from there Okay, so that's the little washer I'll be using. So first things first, I need to take the valve out. As you can see, we've got two O-rings. Got one on the top. And we've got one on the main valve. Now if you can see just there, that's where I put a little groove in. And I'd also put a little notch groove in the top of the cylinder there. Uh, and it was working fine up to a point and then it started leaking. And I tried using tape, uh, PTFE tape around it and it still started leaking. So uh, in the end, uh, what I had to do is put the, uh, the actual uh, O-ring back on. Uh, I didn't put the uh, PTFE tape on this, I put it on the actual uh, regulator itself at the O-ring to try and pack it out, but uh, it was still leaking for some reason. So uh, what I need to do now is take this end off. Now you might find it tight then again you may not but uh, you can either use long nose uh, pliers to undo this cap or you can get a couple of allen keys put them in side by side and just get a screwdriver in between to crank it open this one it's loose enough so you just press it in with your thumb and turn it that way so it's under, under tension so the spring's actually pressing against the cap and against the actual uh, valve stem so there we go there's a spring and it's attached to the actual cap quite a strong spring as well that so that's why instead of trying to mess around trying to find a, a spring that's more stronger than that it's easier to pack that out now the valve just get the valve stem out. Push that down. So that's the valve itself. That's got a little o-ring on it. And all I'm going to do, the little washer, I'm putting on the end of the valve. 
put the valve back in. And just get the, uh, the spring in the cap. And that's put it under tension. You'll know, you'll know it's straight away there's more pressure there. So at that point, you try and line it up, the cap, line the cap up, and start twisting. That's on there. So basically, so that's it. Now, there was a chap on my YouTube channel that was asking about these valves and about getting a larger spring. Well, what you've seen me do now, that's all you need to do really. Uh, I, know, I know people that's had these uh, Hatsons before uh, and got to regulators off uh, Robert Lane, he has actually sent them out a different spring. But I suppose that's that's only if he's got them in stock. Uh, but if not, that is that is the next method. So that's that there. So let's put ten more tension on the on the valve uh, spring, and that means it needs hitting harder with a hammer, and that's. Uh, that's the reason I've done it, so because I can, it will allow me to uh, increase the, uh, the tension on the hammer spring, uh, and it shouldn't make it go overpowered either. So at least you've got more leeway to tune it, fine tune it that way. So uh, I'll have to top it up with it now, and then uh, put it over the craniograph and uh, fine tune it. Uh, the only difference is when you get your regulator, you take the valve valve out, put your regulator in, put it back up, and the same again, you go through the same process of fine tuning. Uh, and that's the thing when you tune a rifle, it's not just a matter of putting the regulator in. Uh, like I say, you need to, uh, for, for best results anyway, you need to uh, increase the size of the transfer port. But by doing that on its own, you'll send the rifle over power, and that's why I've got to uh, put tension on the uh, the valve spring and uh, play around with the uh, tension on the hammer spring. So it's a, it's a fine balance between those three things to get it right. Uh, you might be lucky and do it in one go just by putting the regulator in, but. I know with the actions in the past when I've tried it, as soon as you put that uh, regulator in, the power drops by two foot pounds, and then that means you've got to bypass the anti tamper screws to uh, fine tune it. So, there you go. Hope that's uh, helped a bit for anybody that's thinking of doing this. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the process how it goes anyway. So, thanks for watching this part. Okay, uh, I've filled the air cylinder up with air. Uh, I've adjusted the uh, tension on the hammer spring. Uh, the first shot I got came to 572. I'm using Air Arms Diabolo Field. I've not weighed them, but these should weigh in around 16 grains. And based on that, it's probably around uh, 11 point six foot pounds at the moment which if it stays at that will be spot on so uh, it's about 11.75 foot pounds Strange.
Okay. Put a little magazine in. I'll just show you uh, how I uh, adjust the power now. Okay. So basically, I've got uh, a screw in here. I want it screwed all the way in. You need a four millimeter long Allen key. That goes in there. No, it won't go any further than that. This is where the anti tamper is uh, fitted. The, uh, so basically, unscrewing this. I get so far, and it, now it's in. Right, <clears throat> the next thing to do, there's a little hole there in the slide. When you pull back on that, and what I'm looking for, there's a hole in the side of the hammer which locks it in place, which allows you to turn that adjuster screw there, otherwise it will just spin around. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the hole really. So that locks in, and to increase the power you turn anti-clockwise, and to reduce the power you turn clockwise. That's all there is to it. So it's fine, fine adjustments of that. The reason I screw this all the way back in again because it locks the mechanism back together, so there's nothing loose when I shoot it. So what I'll do now, I'll go back onto the uh, uh, chronograph. Okay, next lot of tent. winding down a bit while I'm more. That's going up. So I've got to bring the power back down again. I'll do one more magazine through it 
and if it stays as the last one I'll consider it on to, on uh, on tune until I regulate it and that should be pushing between 11 and 11 and foot pounds which is where it needs to be really Okay, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, until I get my new air cylinder, uh, I can't really do much more than I've done now. So when I get the new air cylinder, I can then put the uh, regulator in, knowing that uh, every shot there'll be the same amount of air coming out. We should get more consistent then. There's some erratic uh, results on that one. Okay then, so uh, there we go. Thanks for watching.